Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're going to check out a cool new free open source add-on for the Godot game engine called Metsys. Now Metsys is short form for Metroidvania System 1.0. This is a toolkit for creating Metroidvania style games. Metroidvania of course being a concatenation of Metroid and Castlevania. Old school 2D games. Uh, this is going to enable you to create those kind of games and others to be honest. If you're creating 2D games from like reusable blocks, this could definitely be a cool toolkit for you. So it is available on on the asset library, you will notice this is a Godot 4.2 uh, version, and actually 4.2 isn't technically out yet, so we're working on the bleeding edge, at least if you're watching this when I publish it. If it's after the fact, don't worry, but if you're watching this now, you're going to need to use a beta version of the Godot game engine. For this demo, I'm going to be using Godot 4.2. Uh, also, I'm going to be using uh, this guy right here, so I'm going to be using the code base version instead of the asset library version. I just found it works better. Just come on in here and... Uh, Grab the repository right there. By the way, if you do like this guy, give it a star. Let him know that you're interested in his work. And again, grab a version of the Godot game engine. I actually am not using uh, 4.3. I'm using 4.4 right here. So grab 4.2, beta 4, uh, or whatever the newest one is at this point in time. But everything you're going to see today, I am using Godot uh, beta 4, at least at this point in time. So that is that. Now what we do is we go into the most important directory in the world, which is, of course, temp, and we clone that repository. So git, clone, paste, and then bring it on down. So there we've got our project now, and what we do is open it. So just come on up here, we will import our project, it is available here. Let's open up in the Godot project and open it up. Now, in first load, you're actually going to find that it shuts down and reopens. This is normal behavior. It resolves some outstanding errors or whatever. But here you can see our sample game. And what this is basically uh, is just our character in the world, and the map is being populated dynamically. It's all done with code over here. You can actually go into the game code here, and you can see the Metsys system being used to load in these levels. But we're going to go on back over here, and we're going to check out the kind of games that this can create. So let's go see it in action. Uh, I will zoom in on this one in edit, but you can see our simple level. So you got our spawn point for our character, uh, and we can travel around the world. Uh, by the way, uh, space bar to jump if you wish. And you can notice at the top here, you have like a, an automatic mini map being generated, and we're about to transition rooms. And then here you can see kind of a stairwell kind of world, and then this drops down over here into a different world, and you see that mini-map's expanding as we go across the world. You've got a collectible item in it. You're supposed to be going around grabbing all these collectibles. And then we have this portal thingy here uh, that you can exit out from. Okay, so that is the sample game that comes with it. Again, nothing too, too special, but I'm going to show you how all of this is put together. Uh, this is all, once you've got this guy added, you'll have this new folder here called Metsys. Now, it seems weird to me, uh, depending on what platform you're running, you sometimes get this annoying here. Uh, the way that I fix this, at least on the Mac OS platform, is I open this guy up. So go into the add-ons, Metrovania system, database, and then go to map editor, so open up the map editor itself, go over here to 2D mode. You can see it is a uh, Godot GD script project. So all of the tools are just scenes. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do is go in here, grab the scroll, um, scroll container over here and turn horizontal scrolling to disable. And then just save that. Uh, and then do the same thing for, there's gonna be this other tab here, map viewer. Uh, once again, just go on down here, go to map viewer, TSCN, scroll container, horizontal scrolling, Disable. Now, I don't know if this is a bug or not. It doesn't seem to apply on Windows, but it does on Mac. So I, I don't know what the deal is. But once you've done that, uh, we're just going to go back up to our project. Go here to our menu, which isn't showing up. Okay, uh, Godot glitched out. Again, this is a beta product, so I don't know why, but I could not get my menu to drop down. But once you get your menu drop down, go here to Project, Project Settings. Uh, and we're just going to go here to the plugins, make sure that this guy is not enabled, that it is enabled. This will basically cause a reload. You can also shut down and restart and get the same effect. So now you're going to go in and see, oh, good, everything lines up perfectly. Now, I do have to give one piece of feedback to the author. You need to add some kind of a zooming mode. I am getting old, and I find this incredibly small, very hard to read. So uh, if you are in the same boat, and yeah, there doesn't seem to be any way to actually zoom in and out on this canvas. Hopefully that gets added in time, because this is very tiny. But what you see here, this is how your maps are created. So we are in the map editor at this point in time. There's also a map viewer. You can see the various different uh, collectible icons that have been shown in the world. So we can do a collectible finder. 
We can scan the map and find all the various different collectibles that were on there. We can have it show. So these are the little dots you're going to pick up. Uh, you could create new collectibles here by adding one here and adding the various different items or entities you wish into the world like so. And obviously you can hook your code up to work with those things as well. But we're going to go back to the map editor because this is where the magic happens. Now, what you're going to find here is you've got a layer of rooms. It's pretty simple. In each room, uh, you have borders. So how they interact with each other next door. And then you can assign um, scenes to each one. So here you can see as I mouse over it, very, very tiny text at the bottom, at the top right, you can change the different scene that is assigned to each node. I'll show you this with a new section. So I'm going to do a new room layout. So I'm going to create this little block of nodes right there. So this is one huge chunk of, uh, of rooms available here. And then what we can do now is basically grab one and assign a scene to it. So we can say here, this is this is a dark scene, a dark staircase node. Uh, then I could do another node here. So let's do one leading off of it like so, and then another one right there. And you can basically, you pick each one and you can assign different scenes to them. So this one could be a junction. Uh, this one could be a relic room. So you, you create your rooms and your rooms are just basically straightforward scenes. So you see over here in our sample project, uh, we set up um, maps. In each map, you've got all these various different rooms. So let's like, see the um, uh, staircase room. So here's dark staircase. It is over here into the map editor. It's a simple level. So each one of these rooms is basically a level that will load in off of the, the previous link notes. So you basically, you create your levels like this, and then you link them together using the Metsys map editor. So that's how these various different pieces work. There are a couple of other things you can do as well. You can do custom elements, like what you see right here. This is an elevator that was created that way, or you can do just straightforward labels. So here, uh, my label here, and I could drop that there, and we'd have, you know, a label to that particular point that you can again access in code. I don't really, um, find this text big enough to read. Again, I'm blind as a bat. I do really wish that you could scale this in. That is my biggest problem with this guy in general. Same thing goes for here. So you go, um, when I'm signing the scenes or going over like that text up here, the text that shows up there, that's very, very, very small to me. Uh, but again, small complaint, probably something that can be relatively easily fixed. Now, another thing that you can do here is you come in and you define your border types. So right here, we've got solid walls going on right there. Uh, so I could pick, okay, no, this should be open. So there, so now you can pass through that way. You can pass through that way, pass through that way. So now you've got entrance into the area you just created. By the way, there are a number of settings available for controlling these things as well. So we've got uh, theming. Um, so right now, I'll go back here to show you. You can see that you've got like this reddish map color going on. I could go over here. I could change out the theme. Uh, there's a number of provided themes available. So let's go here. We'll load a theme. Uh, it's available under add-ons, uh, themes right here. So let's do um, BS. And then you see here, starting location is going to be this. The corners are all going to be white. So it's going to be a much more stark theme. And we'll go ahead and load that one in. Go back to our map editor. You can see basic colors, just not that black. And it's using, uh, so you expand this down. You can see what it's using in each different space, various different colors and symbols that are in place. So there is your default. Uh, we can change that out and get different results there. So all of this stuff is themable. Uh, you can also go ahead and create um, uh, and custom entries, custom database stuff. You can have it come here and validate your map. So I put some invalid symbols in. It's going to say this map is not going to compile until I actually fix those. Uh, then once you fix them or you cleaned it up or whatever, you built it out, you can export your map out as a JSON file, which you can then load into your game code. Uh, and then if you head on back over here again, so let's go back to the script editor. You're going to see basically how it interacts with the code and the Metroid system underneath it. So uh, not the map viewer game. All right, so here we go. So on load, for example, we're coming in here, go to map, find the map, find the starting point. Uh, then if a room changes, it fires off this event. So you're going to find it's got all these controls in this met sys singleton uh, that gives you access to kind of the linking of the two things together. This is for navigating between various different locations in the map, setting the camera up and so on. But it's not a lot of code to actually hook up your one area to the other. So it, it's a pretty simple system on the whole. So um, again, you create these networks of rooms, you define the boundaries between them. Uh, and then for each one, you assign a scene element to that particular room. 
And then this is the scene that will actually be rendered on the, the game and when it's runtime. So you author your game basically by creating a bunch of disconnected rooms uh, in normal Godot 2D style. Uh, and then you kind of link them all together using this overarching map editor, uh, map viewer kind of setup. And here you can also place collectibles in here. And of course, you can create your own, add them in, uh, and then hook up all the code that you need to for those kind of things as well. So it is a framework for creating a certain style of game, obviously Metroid and uh, Castlevania style. But you can use this to create, you know, several different kinds of games as well. So that is uh, kind of a neat add-on available. Again, uh, it does require Godot 4.2. Uh, it is on the asset store, uh, but again, I found better off to go ahead and use this version right here. You'll also find if you go uh, to the GitHub page, uh, you're going to find all the documentation that's available there. So uh, there's pretty good documentation on how all these systems work, how they all work together. Uh, we get to the bottom. It also explains a little bit about how the... Um, the coding process works, uh, hooking it in so that your code actually reads the maps you created. Uh, but it gives you kind of a, a template for creating your, your world. Again, everything is documented here. Uh, by far and away, the biggest thing I would say is there needs to be a zoom because for old farts like me, even just trying to read this is, is absolutely a nightmare. So I need to have the ability to zoom into this guy. Uh, but other than that, it is a very cool system. Uh, and if you're creating this kind of games, it might be something worth checking out. And if you do like it, again, give the guy a star on GitHub. Uh, I think people seem to appreciate that. And yeah, that's it. This is uh, Metsys for the Godot game engine. Again, Godot 4.2. Uh, it is on the bleeding edge. You may definitely have some issues running it because this is beta on a beta on a beta, but it's a cool framework and the code is all there. So if you need to jump in and fix something yourself, you can do so. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later and goodbye.